Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. This is the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at 14 Star Trek facts. Number 1. The famous Star Trek line, to boldly go where no one has gone before, is thought to have been inspired by a passage in a White House-issued pamphlet on space, Introduction to Outer Space, where it states, It is useful to distinguish among four factors which give importance, urgency, and inevitability to the advancement of space technology. The first of these factors is the compelling urge of man to explore and discover, the thrust of curiosity that leads men to go where no man has gone before. Most of the surface of the Earth has now been explored, and men now turn to the exploration of outer space as their next objective. The pamphlet was published on March 22, 1958 by the Presidential Science Advisory Committee. It was originally made for the President's benefit, but was released publicly by President Eisenhower, who hoped it would be widely disseminated throughout the US and the world. Number 2. The live long and prosper hand gesture is a slight modification of the Hebrew gesture forming the letter Shin, which represents the name Shaddai, meaning Almighty, God. The gesture is still used today by Orthodox Jews of the Kahanim, which are priests descended from Aaron on the patrilineal line, and I do apologize if I'm pronouncing any of those things incorrectly. These Kohanim form a subset of descendants of the priestly Levite tribe. The Kohanim use the Shin gesture during a blessing ceremony, the Nessi at Kapian, or the priestly blessing that accompanies the prayer service. The actual Jewish blessing is done with both hands, not one, extended outward. In this gesture, the arms are then held at a roughly 45 degree angle, level with the shoulders, as opposed to the completely vertical salute fashioned in the Live Long and Prosper version of the gesture. This modified gesture used by Star Trek's Vulcans was originally Leonard Nimoy's idea. Though Nimoy is not an Orthodox Jew himself, when he was a child, his grandfather would take him to the synagogue. During his time there, he observed this blessing and subsequent gesture, and according to his autobiography, was very impressed by the ceremony. Remembering it later while filming A Mock Time, which is the first place the now iconic gesture appeared in Star Trek. In A Mock Time, Spock was originally supposed to kneel before the Vulcan matriarch, with the matriarch placing her hands on his shoulders in a knighting-type gesture. Nimoy didn't like this, as Vulcans were touch telepaths. Thus, he felt this original gesture would be an invasion of privacy for a Vulcan. He then drew on his Jewish roots to come up with an alternative gesture. The hand gesture itself wasn't the only part that was borrowed from Jewish tradition. The live long and prosper and the lesser-known Vulcan traditional response of peace and long life was based on the Jewish Shalom Alahaim, peace be upon you, and the traditional reply of Alahaim Shalom, peace be upon you. Number 3. The actor who played Scotty on Star Trek, James Doohan, was shot six times storming Juno Beach on D-Day. Doohan, a Canadian, after leading his men through a minefield on Juno Beach and personally taking out two German snipers in the process, eventually took four rounds in one of his legs, one in his hands, which ultimately resulted in him losing his middle finger, and one in the chest. The shot to the chest likely would have been fatal, except that he had a silver cigarette case there, given to him by his brother, which deflected the bullet. He would later give up smoking, but at least he could say that being a smoker actually saved his life. Ironically, the shots fired were not by the enemy, but rather by an overzealous Canadian gunman. After his unit was secured in their position for the night, Doohan was crossing between command posts when a Canadian gunman spotted him and opened fire. Number 4. As to why the Canadian Doohan chose to make Scotty Scottish in the show, when he was auditioning for the role of the ship's engineer, he went over various accents with Gene Rodenbury for the character. After he finished, Rodenbury asked him which he liked the best, and he responded, Well, if you want an engineer, he better be a Scotsman, because in my experience, all the world's best engineers have been Scottish. Number 5. Both the Klingon language and the Vulcan language were initially very crudely developed by James Doohan. Later, these languages were expanded and refined by professional linguists, primarily by Mark Okrand. Number 6. Will Wheaton did various voices for the Romulans in the 2009 movie Star Trek. This was kept a secret until fairly close to when the movie came out. Number 7. Cyril Lofton, who played Jake Sisko on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, is the nephew of six-time All-Star in the Major Leagues, Kenny Lofton. Number 8. Leonard Nimoy was the one to come up with the Vulcan nerve pinch. In the first episode, this showed up. Spock was originally supposed to club evil Kirk over the head, knocking him out. Nimoy thought this was inconsistent with Spock's personality. He felt a non-violent nerve pinch would be more fitting with the Vulcan's ability to be able to emit energy from his fingertips. This energy, when applied to the correct nerves of a human, would then render the human unconscious. 
Number 9. The actress who played Tapao, Celia Lovsky, couldn't do the Vulcan live long and prosper hand gesture, which was a problem in the filming of A Mock Time. In order to get around this issue, they simply filmed her hand starting below the camera frame. She'd then use her other hand to get the one hand into the proper position. She could then hold it for a couple of seconds before losing it. Number 10. When Whoopi Goldsberg first learned that they were making a new Star Trek series, The Next Generation, she got Levar Burton and Geordie LaForge to ask the producers of the show if she could have a part because she had been a huge fan of Star Trek since she was a little girl. She was particularly enamored by the character of Uhura, who was the first main character of any TV series to be black. Goldsberg even stated when she first saw the character of Uhura on the show that she yelled, Mama, there's a black lady on TV and she ain't no maid. The producers initially ignored Goldberg's request as they didn't think she was serious in wanting to be on the show. They later learned she was indeed set on getting a pass after she approached them directly when Gates McFadden briefly left the show. Number 11. The planet Vulcan is stated to be just 16 light years away from Earth. If this were true in real life, that would probably put it in the trinary system 40 Eridani, which is 16.45 light years from us. Number 12. In the first two seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation, you'll notice that their uniforms are extremely tight. These uniforms were made of one-piece spandex. To make matters worse, the suits were intentionally sized too small so that they'd stretch extremely tightly over the actors' bodies and not have any wrinkles. The actors hated them and eventually Patrick Stewart's chiropractor told him that if he kept wearing them, it would cause real and possibly permanent damage to his spine. Hence, in Season 3, the uniforms were switched to being two-piece, less form-fitting, and made of wool. Obviously, Councillor Troy still often wore tight spandex, thankfully. Number 13. You may have noticed that the number 47 pops up a lot in the Star Trek franchise. This is because one of the writers and producers of Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Star Trek Voyager, Joe Minoski, had a mathematics professor in college, Donald Bentley, who used to joke that all numbers are equal to 47. This quickly became a running gag on the show. If you didn't notice it before, you'll certainly notice it now when watching Star Trek. Number 14. No one in the original Star Trek show ever stated the word be me up Scotty. So I really hope you enjoyed those Star Trek facts. If you did, be sure to subscribe to our channel for brand new stuff every day. Big subscribe button below me now. Also, if you liked this one, you'll probably like a couple of our other videos, which I'm going to link to on the right now. And if you did enjoy this video, please do give us a like. It really helps us out. Thanks for watching.